everyone. This has been Eubanks, and I'm so glad to have a conversation with you today. We're going to talk about being an HR specialist versus an HR generalist. And a couple things have come together in the last few weeks that kind of drove the need to have this conversation. So the first thing that came to mind, I was speaking at an event last week to a bunch of HR leaders at telecommunications firms around the United States. And these are all companies that are small to mid-sized, you know, a couple hundred at the largest, a lot of companies in that group were a hundred or fewer. So a lot of department of one HR leaders. And I got up, I was talking about recruiting, talking about retention, talking about employee engagement, some of those pieces of the puzzle. And after the session, one of the ladies came up and gave me one of the coolest comments I've honestly ever received in the 10 years I've been speaking. She said, you know, when I showed up here yesterday, I thought that my job was around payroll and benefits and that's about it. But after hearing this conversation, I realized I'm only t- looking at focusing on a fraction of what the value is that HR needs to be bringing to the business. So it was a really fun conversation to have with her and talk about her new outlook on life and her career and profession and everything else. So that's one piece. The other piece is I actually got a comment the other day, a question from a reader who said, hey, I'm about to graduate. I've really enjoyed my classes in college, looking at HR from different lenses. But I need to know, should I specialize or should I try to be a generalist? And so a couple pieces of advice today, we'll talk about what that looks like and it'll probably be a longer video, but dig into some of those pieces of it so you understand what this means for your career, how to think about those decisions, um, and so on. So number one, a generalist does a lot of things, right? If you're an HR generalist at a company with 100 people, you're going to be handling almost everything probably, right? Recruiting, uh, employee engagement, initiatives, if you're doing employee surveys, uh, payroll, the benefits, um, those core things, any training potentially, some light training might might be on your plate as well. So like all those different things that fall under the HR umbrella will be on you if you're a generalist, right? Employee relations, coaching managers, all that stuff. So that's one piece of it to, to think about, okay? If you like the variety, and one of the biggest things I heard from people when I was getting into HR, I was doing all these questions like that to other people. I said, what do you like most about it? And almost all of them said, I like that no two days are the same. Right. So I think that appeals to a lot of people that there's a, there's some diversity there in terms of the roles and responsibilities. So the generalist piece appeals to a lot of people. However, at the same time, there are a lot of people that are specialists. They go really deep in one or or more areas, potentially they go really deep in certain areas. Let me give you some examples of what it looks like. So you can kind of wrap your head around that. For example, you can go really deep in learning development as a trainer or as a developer of content. That might be your sole focus. You're always focused on that piece of it, and that's all you spend your time doing is creating new content, delivering training, measuring the impact of training. Compensation might be another area where you are the one that manages the compensation structure. You're the one that kind of has the has the data on hand. You, you're the one that manages market information about how you match up with the pay rates, submitting salary surveys so that you can get that data back and analyze how market how equitable you are with the market, making sure you're paying men and women fairly in the business. Like those things will be on your plate if you're a compensation specialist. Uh, one other area that's very common is recruiting. So recruiting, I'll dedicate some more time to in a little bit, but recruiting is an area of specialty where you spend your time trying to find the next great uh, talent, uh, next great individual to come and join the business. And when I got started years ago, one of the things that I really enjoyed, strangely, as an introvert, I enjoyed recruiting, probably because I wasn't talking about myself, I was talking about the company and the culture and the, the values and the mission, and I really believed in those things. And so it was easy to talk about those things and sell it to someone that was potentially a candidate for, for us. And what's interesting is as we grew, my boss had told me, as we grow as a company, all the layers will go under you. So as you as we grow and you can't do everything anymore, we're gonna hire someone else and you'll hand off the things that you don't wanna do as much to someone else. So when you become the HR manager, you're gonna hand off the other tasks and when you become you know, higher up and so on. And one of the things that's hard for me is letting go of the recruiting stuff because I enjoyed it so much and I felt like it really connected me to the leaders in the business, the hiring managers, and to the flow of what was going on in the company. But recruiting, as an example there, is another way of specializing in one specific area. So when you're getting in your career, there's not one best way. There's not one way that's, okay, do this and everything else will work out for you because everyone comes at it from a different perspective. You will typically start out, if you start out as an assistant or an HR admin, an HR intern even, doing a little bit of everything. Um, You will touch a little bit of everything typically, and that's good for you because you'll get exposure to the things that you like and the things that you don't like. It's really important to have both of those experiences so you know early on 
this is my favorite thing, this is my least favorite thing, and I'll make sure and, and try to tailor and sculpt and craft my career over time to get closer to those things I like and away from those things I don't like as much. Right? We can't get rid of all the things in HR we don't like, but you can sculpt that over time and focus more on the things that really appeal to you. If you love interacting with people and being dynamic and selling the culture, recruiting your, your space, and you might work into a, an area where that's all you do. Or if you're really analytical, you love the data, you love talking numbers, and, and that's just the, the language you speak, the compensation side might be a better fit for you, things like that. Okay, one of the other things to think about is that this depends on the company size. If you're working for a company with 50 people, you are going to be a generalist. Okay, when you get into your career and you get, get your legs under you, you will be a generalist at that size because they don't have enough money to buy 10 HR people. All right, so the bigger the company is, if, you're, if you go and apply for a job with a company with 10,000 people or, or more, you're going to most likely be a specialist in a certain area. They, those, those companies do have generalists. Again, everybody's structured a little different, but you will probably be more of a specialist in a company like that. The higher you go, Again, it can, it can differentiate. You might be the head of talent where you only care about the recruiting side. Sorry, you, you only care about the recruiting side. Or you might be the head of HR where you're, where you're focused on kind of overseeing all the HR activities, things like that. All right, so that's a whole piece. One thing to it that I'll tell you, if you're trying to get in, you're trying to get your first job, you're not sure what to do. The recruiting piece is a powerful superpower. So many people do not do recruiting well, that have HR generalist kind of backgrounds, they think taking a job requisition, posting the requisition online, and then hoping candidates pour in, they think that's recruiting. And while it is, I guess, traditional recruiting, sourcing and going out there and digging up candidates, trying to find them, searching through databases, having those skills is really, really important and really powerful for you. So one of the things that I recommend when someone's like, hey, I've been trying to get a job, I can't get a job, there's no open HR jobs locally, Go find a staffing firm that needs someone and you get your, your you know, you cut your teeth basically, pick up the phone and calling companies and trying and calling candidates and trying to be a, a recruiter for employers, the contract uh, recruiter. It's a hard job. It's very tough. But if you can succeed at that, when you get over into the recruiting, the corporate recruiting side, it's a pretty easy transition. If you have a year or two of experience under your belt and a corporate recruiting job opens up, companies love those people that have succeeded in that that uh, external staffing recruiting role because they have really great sourcing and recruiting skills. So it's a, a thing to think about if you're trying to get in, that's a way to work your way into that side of it. I'm gonna make sure and link below the video, the guide that I wrote um, to job, the ultimate guide to HR job titles. All right, it's a grandiose name, a grandiose title for that, but it looks at the different types of jobs that are available in HR across the spectrum, what you might do, different things to think about, some of the things we talk about here, but this is a little more in depth in some areas and that's a little more in depth in others. So we give some really good uh, handle on that, what it looks like. In addition, I'll just say this to, to wrap up. The HR profession is super duper nuanced. Like everything I've said, I've said today, I've also said it can change depending on the company, right? There's different approaches. So it's very nuanced, but with all the new technologies, Right. With all of the changes that are happening, with all of the need today um, to create a great employee experience while being compliant legally, there's never been more demand for good, solid HR talent than ever before. So if you were trying to get into the profession and you're, you're struggling there a little bit, stick with it. We need good people and you might be the next one uh, that someone needs to hire. Thank you very much.